Hey everyone, me Kevin here. Here's the absolute latest on what Congress, specifically the Senate, is up to with regards to stimulus. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start with a letter from Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer. Then we're going to go into about five different interviews that I have cut down so that we only listen to the parts that matter in regards to stimulus. Let's start with the letter from Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer. Quick reminder to get your life insurance in as little as five minutes and check out the amazing Black Friday sale for those programs down below. Just try to put that coupon code in. You'll see the amazing reduction you get with that coupon code. Okay, let's go ahead and start here with a letter from Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer. This is no surprise. They start off by saying, look, we used to be close on a deal between Mnuchin and Meadows. Now we're not. But we came down from our $3.4 trillion deal to about 2.2. The problem is now you're going from about $1 trillion for a stimulus package, Mitch McConnell, to around $500 billion. We need you to come back, but at the very least, would you consider coming back to the negotiating table? They actually start here by saying, we were encouraged by your comments shortly after the election that you believe Congress needs to act together on another COVID-19 relief package and that, quote, it's a possibility we will do more for state and local governments. Democrats agree with you. We write to request that you join us on the negotiating table this week, which realistically this week has three days left, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, that's it, in order to work towards a bipartisan, bicameral, which basically means both chambers of Congress, COVID-19 relief bill to crush the virus and save American lives. Priorities. Aid to schools, small businesses, individuals, that's direct payments to individuals. Hospitals need funding and helping prevent those evictions and hunger problems we are seeing. The COVID-19 pandemic and economic recession will not end without our help. This is Democrats putting a stake in the ground saying, look, this isn't going to be over until we solve the problems. Let's pass relief so we can solve the problems. Well, let's jump on over to first hear what Republicans say. And then we'll listen to what Democrats say. So we'll pop on over right now and let's go ahead and start with Mitch McConnell. He comes up a couple of different times here. So we'll uh, we'll pop back to him in, uh, a couple of times here. If you look at the effectiveness of the CARES Act, it has to be one of the most dramatic and effective pieces of legislation uh, ever passed by the Congress. And I would remind everyone that it uh, passed first in the Republican Senate and then was approved on a voice vote Doesn't matter. Uh, by the House. I'm focusing on the next couple of months. We hope to get an omnibus appropriation. I believe the speaker would like to do that. I would like to do that, hopefully. That's a spending bill to keep the government funded so we don't shut down on December 11th. That will be the view of the administration as well. And of course, we still are confirming well-qualified uh, judges, largely to the district courts at this stage. And we intend to continue doing that as well until the end of the session. Mitch McConnell will be right back to answer some more questions about stimulus as well. So stay tuned. Let's listen to what John Thune says. He's the next ranking member in the Senate in terms of Republicans. We have our job and work to do here in Congress, too, our responsibility. Uh, I think Congress should pass the coronavirus relief bill, which has passed the Senate, or I should say, has, has, has drawn a majority of support in the Senate, not once, but twice. Now, heads up, what has drawn support not once but twice? The skinny bill. Notice he actually had to correct himself when he said it passed in the Senate. The skinny bill never passed in the Senate because in order to pass the Senate, you need 60 votes. It never got 60 votes. It never passed. There has not been a second stimulus bill that has passed the Senate. Instead, this is what the skinny bill looks like. The skinny bill is worse than the Heals Act because it does not provide any form of stimulus checks. Instead, it simply provides $300 in unemployment, $105 billion for schools, it provides liability protections, and it provides a second round of PPP funding with some money for the Postal Service, money for rare earth mining, and $31 billion for public health and social services, and $16 billion for COVID-19 testing, uh, along with some money for the USDA and fisheries. That's it. That's the skinny bill. No rental assistance, nothing on forbearance, nothing on student loans. Nothing on stimulus checks. Zero. This is the bill that they're talking about here having gotten support not once but twice. Sure, but majority support does not mean a bill gets done because that's 51 votes. Majority is 51. You need 60 votes to get it done. So y'all, you didn't get anything done. It is a targeted bill. It's a fiscally responsible bill. It deals with schools. It deals with health care. It deals with the PPP program, which uh, benefits small businesses all across the country. And, um, and it could become law. 
the House Democrats uh, and the Democrats here in the Senate, uh, for that matter, seem insistent on uh, clinging to this multi-trillion dollar uh, liberal wish list that they've put out there, even as their majority, the Democrat majority in the House, continues to shrink by the day. Uh, if nothing else, I think the American people are sending a message that they want a fiscally responsible approach to this, to this challenge, uh, one that targets the assistance where it's needed the most and provides uh, much needed relief to the American people. Now, many experts are arguing this, right? John Thune here is saying, oh, Americans sent a mandate saying we want more Republicans in power, saying we want to spend less money in government. But others, especially on the Democratic side, say, no, that's not why Democrats lost some Democratic seats. It's instead because there was this big association of Democrats with socialism and, you know, defund the police and, and movements that, that were very empowered towards the far left rather than the moderate left. And maybe that's why they lost some seats. Obviously, people will continue to debate around why people lost seats, but the reality is I don't, we already know statistically that 80 to 90% of Americans are proponents of a new larger stimulus package around $2 trillion. So to say that Republicans kept power because they had a mandate to spend less money and not do stimulus checks, I don't think so. Well, I certainly hope that uh, the Democrats will come to a conclusion here soon, uh, decide to work with Republicans. Republicans have been willing to compromise from the very beginning. And, and this is what's so frustrating. You literally have Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer just writing a letter going, please negotiate with us, please compromise. And here they are saying the same thing. They literally just talk to each other. It's, it's like they have their backs to each other and, and they're just complaining about each other. <laughs> uh, the Democrats clearly have not. And uh, we will continue to have an open door and we're ready to negotiate at a moment's notice uh, if the Democrats uh, come. They just asked you to pick up the freaking phone. Schumer has got a flip phone. Apparently y'all got his number. Call him. Realization that uh, the position that they hold right now is an untenable one and one that is uh, costing the American people. Now at the same time we've been doing this, the Democrats have seemed to be rooting for failure. Started with Joe Biden saying he wasn't sure that a vaccine was even real. Kamala Harris in the presidential, vice presidential debate said that if there was a Donald Trump said that there was a vaccine that worked, she would not take it. She, now, OK, he, he, he stopped like. For context, Kamala Harris did say when she was asked, will you take a vaccine? Uh, she said, I won't take a vaccine if Trump says to take it, but if Fauci says to take it, I will take the vaccine. He didn't say the second half. And Nancy Pelosi in her $3 trillion so-called Heroes Act, she has more money in that to do direct paychecks to illegal immigrants than she does to help with a vaccine. Okay. Now, first of all, the HEROES Act number two is not $3 trillion anymore. It's 2.2 to $2.4 trillion. So it's literally like now they're complaining about things that aren't being talked about a anymore, which is a little frustrating because it's like these people are in Congress. They should be up on this crap. Look, it's very simple. This is the HEROES Act number two. When we go to stimulus, yes. People get $1,200 stimulus checks if they have ITIN numbers. Oops, that's way too big. Uh, that means if they are illegal, but they pay taxes or, or they have the at least the capacity to pay taxes, be it by having a taxpayer identification number, a TIN, they could get a stimulus check. This is true. But what's weird is this individual is suggesting that illegal immigrants would get more money via stimulus checks. But over here, we've got $249 billion in this year's act going to the Health and Human Services Department for research and development, vaccines, therapeutics, and other related expenses for, for fighting the pandemic. So I, I'm positive that checks to people with ITIN numbers is not going to be anywhere close to $249 billion. Why? Because checks to everyone last time cost about $250 billion. So, you know, checks to people with ITIN numbers would be a fraction of that. Let's say it was even 10%. That's 25 billion. Look, we can have an argument over 25 billion. I get it. We got 10x that going to R&D vaccine and therapeutics. Like, why are these people saying these things when it's, it's so the opposite? And, and this isn't me trying to, like, side with Dems. I mean, I equally slam the Dems, okay? They say stupid things all the time, too. It just frustrates me because it's like... 
Can we, if everybody just had the uh, consistent information, I feel like we'd have a deal by now. Tricks of distribution that have been recommended to the governors, and I think the governors are all uh, adopting uh, the... Oh, this is interesting. Uh, I, I included this because he talks about who's going to get the vaccines first. Um, about 15 percent of the whole population would be included in that health care workers, first responders, people most likely to be at the highest risk if they got the vaccine. Uh, the next 35 percent would be the emergency workers of the country. And by the time you get that 50. OK, so I think what he's saying is health care and emergency responders first, first 15 percent. Next 35 percent, I think he means essential workers. Percent uh, of the people that could have access to the vaccine if they wanted to have access to the vaccine, probably into March. And everybody is safer if the people you're most likely to come into contact with outside your normal closest circle have been vaccinated and can't get the vaccine. So I do think that's all, I can't get the virus. I do think that's all headed in the right direction. We'll be talking more about that. I also think in the troop drawdown area, um, in Somalia, the discussion. Okay, we're going to fast forward a little bit on this. Look, Donald Trump reduced uh, troops in about half in areas like Afghanistan, Iraq. This was one of his original campaign promises, bring the troops home. This has left McConnell and the left actually pretty upset. So you've got people on both sides upset saying this is going to leave a power vacuum in the area. And it's not good because, well, if you have a power vacuum, then the Taliban might be able to move in. Okay, topic for really a different video, but but that's roughly what's going on. So again, Democrats in the House, they need to come back to the table. They need to focus on what is right for our frontline workers, those essential workers that are out there every single day caring for members of our communities. So uh, let's get over the partisan politics. The election is over, folks. Let's come back to the table. Let's make sure we're doing the right thing. And, and this, I don't, maybe I just don't understand Congress, but when they say, let's go back to the negotiating table, Nancy Pelosi just wrote a letter and said, come back to the negotiating table. Why don't you walk over there? Go away from the mic and walk over there. For our constituents, those essential workers and celebrating the fact now we have a vaccine, let's keep our economy strong and protect those essential workers. And remember, the fact that we have this vaccine now, a lot of folks are saying, hey, this is actually really good for stimulus because it shortens the amount of time that we actually need stimulus for rather than thinking, oh, my gosh, we might need this for another year. Maybe we only need it for another six months. We as legislators need to build on our CARES Act success by passing the next round of assistance. By the way, these are all Republicans so far. Like literally every single one of them is like, yeah, we need to do more COVID relief. Like they're all saying we need to do the stimulus. But they just talk is cheap, I guess. Small business assistance uh, is especially important as we see hundreds of thousands of businesses having permanently closed on account of this pandemic. They require additional help. I've been talking about this for months. I'll continue to talk about this. Fortunately, a variant of the legislation I've put forward with Senator Bennett is part of the Republican Senate relief package, as is it, uh, additional essentials like school funding. So. Um, look, I, I understand some of my colleagues on the far left have other priorities. They may be a, a bit in tension with our more targeted relief mm -hmm. bill. Um, they may have additional uh, sort of wish list priorities that they want to tack onto this. This is, a not, this is not a time for uh, putting forward your ideological initiatives. If there's one thing that I think we learned in the recent elections, it's been the rejection uh, of this far left uh, impulse of the National Democratic Party. So um, hopefully, which I, I will say, let's just hop on over to the Heroes Act one more time here really quick. Let's just quickly try to identify some of the far left stuff. OK, look, Republicans paint food aid as far left. I disagree with that. Rural aid. I don't think you can really call rural aid far left. Homeowner assistance, rental assistance, state and local. Look, this this half, right? Half of this. Okay, the, the, yeah, the left has really been pushing for more than what they need so they can pre-fund expenses. Okay, maybe. Uh, you know, NOAA getting money here. Climate change, better better work for National Oceanic Atmospheric Administration. Yeah, it's, you kind of wonder, like, why is $400 million in there for NOAA? And look, maybe I'm missing something, okay? Maybe they need some more COVID funding. But, you know, then you got $620 million here for federal prisons. Violence Against Women's Act. Some of these things 
don't exactly spell out COVID relief. And again, I'm all for like better quality prisons and, and you know, hey, no violence against women. Like, don't get me wrong. I, I'm all for that. I'm just wondering what is two point. I mean, okay. All right. This one, I wrote it here. See, it says $2.9 billion to the National Science Foundation. And it says research around coronavirus. But but then again, you also wonder like two point nine billion dollars. Like, do, do do we need to know more about the coronavirus, or do we need to know more about just getting the vaccine at this point? I don't know. Maybe I'm missing something. Maybe maybe that's going to help us reduce future pandemics, right? Maybe they're just misconveying this this bill. Uh, you know what else do we have here? Second chance grants of two hundred fifty million dollars for for ex prisoners. Not sure what that has to do with COVID. Okay. Treasury oversight, 35 million. Elections, 3.6 billion for elections. Well, we could cut that out. The election's over. <laughs> Jeez. National Archives here, get $92 million. General Services Administration, the GSA, a billion dollars for new technology, new computers and stuff for the GSA. $20 million for the parks, $45 million for fish and wildlife. $900 million for Bureau of Indian Affairs. And again, don't get me wrong, I'm all for Indian Health Services, $2.3 billion, or $135 million for the Endowment for the Arts and Endowment for the Humanities, another $135 million. Yeah, but, you know, you're gonna piss off some Republicans if you put all this stuff in here. Like, at least make the title say, like, for COVID. You know, prison grants because of COVID. <laughs> Like, some of the things, like, I, I get it. And, and look, I'm a big fan of money for education, right? Uh, you know, big fan of anything related to the food assistance, uh, the money that we need, right? The FAA needs help. Amtrak needs help. Come on, these are these are no-brainers. Broadband, both sides are on board with that. I get that, the broadband money. Obviously, the stimulus checks, the small business money, the EIDL, the student loans. This is good, the Main Street lending. Like, these are things that are great. Uh, but yeah, they're, they're definitely, I mean, if we add all this stuff up here, you know, they're, they're somewhere around, I don't know, maybe a 50 to a hundred billion dollars in here of, of stuff where it's like, oh, uh, okay, like, where's this all going to? Now, these are a lot of smaller line items over the scope of like a 2.4 trillion dollar bill, right? 50 billion here or there in a negotiation, it's not going to make that much of a difference. But this is what Republicans are using to argue that Democrats want a big liberal wish list. Even though monetarily it's not like huge, the stuff is in there, right? It's the, it's the, what do they say? It's the small leaks that sink great ships or is it small strokes fell great oaks? I don't know, but I think y'all know what I mean. And I think that's what Republicans are picking up on is like, well, why the F is this in here? Let's keep going. Uh, we can agree that there's much to like in this Senate bill and uh, and move on it in coming days. And Democrats do not agree that there's much to like on that particular bill, mostly because the skinny bill also includes very, very stringent liability protections, which Democrats are very, very anti. Is your pessimism on COVID relief based on actual conversations you've had with Democrats or simply on their public statements? Mm. And then secondly, it seems like you are going to take the lead back from Secretary Mnuchin are you going to now talk to Speaker Pelosi and does President-elect Biden have a role in shaping it during the lame duck? <clears throat> well, first, um, I'm based on what I'm seeing publicly because we've had no private discussions about this. And it looks to me what? like the Speaker, the Democratic leader of the Senate, and uh, former Vice President Biden all have the view that two and a half trillion or nothing. Um, I share the view of my colleagues that have been expressed here is that a more narrowly targeted uh, proposal such as we laid out in September and October here in the Senate deals with the actual problem. As some of you <clears throat> may or may not have noticed, revenues at the state level are basically up almost everywhere. And they continue to insist, apparently, on almost a trillion dollars for state and local government. That has nothing to do with solving this problem. Old information here, right? Original Heroes Act wanted close to a trillion dollars for state and local governments. The current Heroes Act only wants $417 billion. So to sum it up, I'm open to a targeted bill, roughly of the amount that we recommended, a half a trillion dollars, which is not nothing. Okay, half a trillion dollars means 
Yeah, this is unfortunate. Just a few days ago, it looked like they were targeting potentially the Heels Act, which was around $1 to $1.1 trillion, because he said a limit of somewhere around $1 to $1.1 trillion. Now he's backtracking again to $500 billion, which basically bye-bye stimulus checks. Narrowly targeted at schools, at healthcare providers, at PPP, and of course liability reform to keep America from being engaged in an epidemic of lawsuits on the heels of the pandemic. Very open to that, but I've seen no evidence yet, as several of my colleagues have suggested, that they're open to it. Lindsey Graham ought to call. All right, so that was Republicans. Here's what Chuck Schumer says. We'll be calling Senator McConnell and telling him to stop blocking COVID relief for small businesses, working families, state and local governments, hospitals, you name it. After the election, Americans expect us to put aside our partisan differences and do the job they sent us to do. So how to send- This was recorded today, by the way. Republicans respond, instead of working to pull the country back together so that we can fight our common enemy, COVID-19, Senate Republicans continue to push debunked conspiracy theories denying reality, poisoning the well of our democracy. People have been hearing for months now from Democrats and Republicans that it's their priority to get a COVID deal done, that it's the top priority. We're going to get it done. We're going to get it done. Leader McConnell just a few minutes ago told all of us reporters that he still has not had a single private conversation with Speaker Pelosi about a negotiation. What do you say to people I've who said see this as a complete... This is a great question, by the way. The reporter's saying, in case you didn't catch it, basically, the reporter's like, y'all keep saying you want to do stimulus, that it's a high priority. Mitch McConnell just said, y'all haven't even talking. What's going on? Failure, We've McConnell. Well, it's, it's Leader McConnell. We have asked, I have asked Leader McConnell three times, and on the floor yesterday and today, to sit down and negotiate with us. According to some of his own members, they don't even know what he's doing. So this idea, Democrats are eager to sit down and get a bipartisan bill. It's only the Democratic House that has passed the bill. To, if you want to get something done, we need our Republican senators to tell Leader McConnell to sit down and come up with a fair, comprehensive, bipartisan negotiation. Well, this gives you a little bit of insight into the absolute latest. Check out the links down below for life insurance, multiple free stocks with Weeble when you deposit $100, and of course, the amazing programs linked down below. Thanks so much for watching, and until next time.